In 2007, a 29-year-old young man came in to see me for consultation for revision surgery. He had had a previous rhinoplasty and septoplasty done elsewhere, and he wasn't satisfied. The airway was not good. The look wasn't right. And I said, I can make it better. We'll open up your airway, get you a better nose. And he said to me, great doctor, but there's one thing. Are you going to have to put packing into my nose? And I said, well, yes, of course. That's what we do routinely. He said, well, guess what? No way. And he turns to the consultation room door and says, you see that door? And I said, yes. He says, I'm out of here. Just like that. And I said, really? I said, you're not going to consider the surgery because of the packing, the post-operative four to five days that it has to be in place? He said, yep, you got it. I cannot tolerate the packing. And I realized that other patients or prospective patients had also been concerned about that. And that's what led to our developing the Kotler nasal airway. finished with the nasal surgery. We're about ready to put in the nasal airway. I should mention incidentally as needed depending on the anatomy often we'll laterally fracture the inferior turbinates using a large long speculum. Two reasons. One, gives a little extra room for insertion but most importantly also gives the patient just a little more breathing room. Good. Now we're going to insert the nasal airway. We pass both tubes into the nose, passes down into the interior. And then we want to check the position. This is very important. The tubes must rest on the floor of the nose. There's two reasons. First of all, it's a silent area. It hasn't been operated on. There's no chance of damaging any of the tissue that may have been operated on. And secondly, that assures a straight course back into the nasal pharynx without any buckling of the airway. And it also provides the proper room for any packing. Now I'm going to check the position of the tubes to make sure they're on the floor of the nose. So using the narrow speculum, I depress the airway. If there's any chance that it's sitting other than on the floor, just press down with the bayonet forceps. And now I'm comfortable that it's in the right location. Do the same thing on this side. Push it down into the proper location on the floor. And now you see there's plenty of room for packing. Now I'll pull this light out if you want Now I'm, now I'm going to take some saline and flush it through each of the airways again to certify that they're clear. Just a little squirt goes through clearly. Next, for double check, I take the suction catheter, pass it through the airway into the nasal pharynx. Helps the anesthesiologist, less of a burden, and certifies again that the back end of the airway is open. Great. Good. So, and you can see from the diameter of the tubes, tubes which is larger than any other available hybrid, whether it be a pack, an airway, or a splint, an airway, there's going to be a tremendous airflow in and out. Okay. Now I'm going to insert the packing. We use a Telfa pad folded in two coated with acromycin ointment. You notice a 4 all nylon suture is placed and that's to prevent any chance of the packing slipping into the nasal pharynx. So now I'll insert this. Now I'm inserting the packing. Again, I'm making sure the tube is still on the floor of the nose. There's plenty of room. It sits right there. Done. Okay. Now I'll put the packing onto the other side. Good. Fine. Now, now I will tie the left nylon suture to the right. The right to the left suture, and this prevents any accidental slippage into the nasal pharynx. Good. That's it. Yeah, no, she's
Good. All right. Uh-huh. Feeling well? Uh-huh. Good. Good. Breathing okay? Yeah. Uh huh. Good. Give me a little sample. Give me a little sample. So seal your lips and take a real deep breath through those tubes and back out. Seal your lips and take a real deep breath. And out. Ah. Good. <laughs> good. It's very important that the family feel comfortable with the home irrigation. So we found. The best time to confirm that everybody's on track with it is here in the recovery room. We'll ask whoever is going to be taking care of our patient at home to irrigate one side. It after Nurse Vicky has demonstrated it on the other side. So here's the airway in place after the procedure. Notice that on the left side, I've put an absorbable folded packing and wedged it in between the airway and the inferior turbinate. On the right side, we have a folded Telfa pad, a non-absorbable packing, it can also be used as a stent, and that's wedged between the airway and the septum. All right, it's one day after surgery and our pretty young lady's doing fine, and we're now going to do two things. One, we're going to remove the nasal airway, and secondly, remove the Telfa pads that we use as a packing. First thing I'm going to do is instill uh, topical anesthetic. This is a combination of Afrin uh, nose spray and Ponicane. Just a couple more little drops. It's nice to do it progressively. Very good. What I'm going to do is just very gently with a uh, standard Kelly clamp, just a little bit of forward motion of the airway tube on both sides. And once you do that, then you can very handily put the clamp underneath the uh, bridge. One, two, three, coming out, done. Fantastic. Very nice. Uh, great. So now what we're going to do is just take out the little Telfa pads on the inside. And I'm just going to tug a little bit on the stitch. Good. I'm actually now just going to give a little extra squirt of the um, same uh, solution. Make sure we have nice uh, anesthesia on the inside. And, and incidentally, typically this is done by our medical assistant. Now I'm going to sever the connection stitch. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to just tug on the uh, stitch to bring the pad just a little farther forward. One, two, three, it's out. Very good. We doing okay? You're great. You're good. Now she's going to feel even better. And now on the right side, the same thing. One, two, three, just to loosen up the pad, and it's out. Very good. And she'll remove this as soon as she gets home. Finally, there are two questions, doctor. The first is, is there any reason not to provide a service that gives patient comfort and, in fact, is a practice builder? And the second question is, is there any reason not to have an additional profit center in your practice?